Pi. In this video, we're going to show you how you can work with the Rococo mocap, import it, clean it up and add it in Cascadeur. We've tried to cover different scenarios you might face, as well as share some tips and tricks on how to speed up the process. So let's begin, shall we? What I have here is a set of Rococo mocaps, and we're going to be looking at one of them. Just drag and drop the file into the scene to import it. Click yes to go to the rig mode. As you can see, this is the Rococo Newton character with the Newton skeleton, and it is fully recognized by the quick rigging tool. So simply click add rig elements and generate the rig. It will automatically create all the rig elements, including collision capsules, fulcrum groups, etc., as well as put different body parts on separate tracks. Having the rig allows you to retarget and unbake your animation and use all the tools that Cascadeur has to offer. Now, there's a couple of things that you might want to pay attention to. If you open up a new scene, you will find the Rococo Newton character already rigged. However, importing your animation directly onto this particular character may cause issues due to the fact that its proportions may be different from the character in your animation. As you can see here, the character in my animation happens to be shorter, and it's gonna be different depending on the person recording mocap. So going through the rig process with your character is essential to get the best results. But here I have a bunch of animations recorded by the same person. A quick shout out to Sam from Rococo. Thank you, Sam. Anyways, here's what you can do to speed up the process. Before going to the rig mode, select all the frames of the animation and press Alt F to delete them. So you will end up with a T-pose of the character with correct proportions that we only have to rig once. And then you can save it as a separate file and use it as a template to import your animations. So simply go to File, Import FBX, make sure you're using the animation preset and then import your animation. It's a very quick process and this way you will not have to rig your character every time. Just be mindful of the different proportions the characters in the mocaps may have. With that out of the way, we're ready to get to editing. The very first thing you have to check when importing your animation is that the fulcrum points are determined correctly. Enable show fulcrum points to visualize them. You want to see the green circles appear when the character gets in contact with the surface and disappear when the contact is lost. The more precise the fulcrum points are determined, the better results you will get from unbaking and retargeting of your animation. You can always change the fulcrum settings in the keyframes for the selected points. You can find them under Object Properties, Fulcrum Point. We also have a dedicated video on our channel that explains how you can adjust them. In this animation, the default settings seem to work just fine. So now I want to retarget this animation onto this character here. It's holding the weapon, which has been rigged, and we want to see how the weight of the weapon is going to affect the physics. To retarget your animation, select all the frames on the timeline and go to Edit Retargeting Copy. And on the other scene, make sure that you have enough frames selected on the timeline. In this example, I want to keep this pose in frame 0, so I will start with frame 1. And simply go Edit Retargeting Paste. Retargeting in Cascadeur works for any humanoid characters which have autoposing rig controllers. Now if we press play, you will notice that the weapon does not follow the animation. To fix that, select all the points of the weapon and in Object Properties under Point IKFK Settings, set their behavior to FK and make sure to enforce FK behavior in interpolation as well. And I capped the initial pose of this character so I would not have to adjust the placement of the weapon again. Now in this animation we have this jump here which we want to edit and change. It starts at about frame 80 so let's select the interval on the timeline which includes this jump and use animation on baking. You can adjust the parameters in the scene settings depending on your animation but the default ones will work just fine. 
So what it does, it automatically determines the keyframes and chooses the best interpolation for the intervals, effectively turning a baked animation into a keyframe one. So now let's turn on auto physics and see what's happening there. Now with auto physics, it's always a good idea to set it to work on interval, especially when editing mocap which ensures that the very first and the very last frame selected will remain unchanged and will blend perfectly. The orange color on the timeline represents the frames where the character has no grip with the surface. Now, instead of having the character jumping forward, I wanted to jump on some sort of a surface. So I'm gonna create a cube and place it in front of the character. Now with the cube selected, go to Command Collision Add Box to get it to interact with physics. Now looking at the timeline, we want to select the frames starting from when the character lands after the jump. And we want to move the character up on the box. To do that, select the character's center of mass, enable interval edit mode, make sure it's set to step, and simply position your character somewhere on the box. Now once we started moving the character, the interpolation on the intervals turned green which means it got fixed. To avoid that, make sure the Fix and Interpolation button is off. Okay, something like so. Um, you do not have to be super precise here. Just make sure that the fulcrum points actually work when coming in contact with the surface. We'll fix the position of the feet later. Now, let's turn on Physics Corrector and we will see that it creates an accurate ballistic trajectory for the jump. Use plus and minus on your keyboard to adjust the timing for the intervals. So we increase the interval here to give a character a little bit more time to stay airborne and thus make the jump higher. Now if you look closely, although the jump has become higher, the poses before and after the jump have not changed. This is because the physics corrector does not change the poses, but all the other physics filters do. Let's turn on Smooth Trajectory and you will see that now the character will squat lower before making the jump. And you can always adjust the slider to change how much it affects your animation. Now, I do not want to apply physics to the whole animation here. So I'm going to select the interval I'm interested in, recalculate physics for it and then apply it. Now there's two ways to do this. If the fixed interpolation button is off, it will apply auto physics only to the keyframes. And I think we do not have enough keyframes here for the jump. So I'm going to turn this button on and then snap to auto physics, which will apply physics to every single frame, almost like bake it. Now, if we want to continue to edit it, we can use animation on baking again and get ourselves a new set of keyframes to work with. Namely, I expect it to give us a keyframe at the apex of the jump right about here. And then we can have another pass of auto physics, for example, at secondary motion. Now back to the feet. As you can see, the feet go through the collision surface. You can easily fix that using the fulcrum motion cleaning tool, which will not only prevent the feet from sliding, but also push them out of the collision surfaces. And the more precise the fulcrum points were determined, the better the result will be. So let's see what else we have here. Now, when we place the character on the box, we only moved part of the animation. To quickly move the rest of it, select the character's center of mass and copy its global position. Then select the rest of the frames of the animation, go to the first frame of the interval, turn on interval edit mode, and press Ctrl V to paste the position. And as you can see, this way it will bring the rest of the animation to the same level. In this part of the animation here, we seem to have the same issue of the feet sliding and going through the surface. Again, use the fulcrum motion cleaning tool on this interval to fix that. Okay, now let's get to the fun part. This axe here is a physics object. Mainly, it has a rigid body, which means its weight can be adjusted, which will affect the character's center of mass here. By default, it's set to one kilogram, but let's crank it up to some crazy value, like 100 kilograms. And instantly you can see how the center of mass has been shifted towards the axe, 
is basically now in between the axe and the character because in fact they now weigh roughly the same. If we turn auto physics on, we can see how this shift in the center of mass affects the balance of the character. But again, 100 kilograms is a crazy value, so let's set it to something rather reasonable. So you can simply play with the numbers and see what works best for your particular animation. Or quickly make some variations with it. Now let's add secondary motion. As you can see, it has drastically changed the animation. So let's learn how we can control it. Now I know this pose is far from being perfect, but let's say we like it. It's a golden pose and we want to preserve it. And to do that, you can set priority frames. Now all the physics filters will respect this pose and build the animation around it. But here we still have physics corrector and secondary motion enabled, but the priority frame is preserved 100%. So far, we've been using interval edit mode in the step setting to make equal changes to all the frames. So let's use it in Bezier mode and adjust the slashing animation. Once we're happy with the general trajectory, we can enable the moving pivot mode and adjust the local position and rotation of the hand in all the frames selected. So what I'm trying to do here is to position the axe in the way that the slashing animation would happen on the same plane, without affecting the trajectory. Interval edit mode is an extremely powerful tool and there's multiple ways you can use it. Now with the slashing animation out of the way, let's use auto posing to quickly fix the position of the shoulder by simply deactivating the points. And then apply auto physics. Again, it may be a good idea to first do the physics corrector pass, then apply the results and then use secondary motion on top of that. Here I've noticed that the axe goes through the body, so let's quickly unbake this interval and fix it. I do not want to have any keyframes on my weapons track, so I'm not going to include it in unbaking. And finally, I couldn't help but notice that our character is completely unaware of its surroundings. So let's make him face the music by using Ragdoll. Let's give us some extra frames at the end of the animation, then select the interval where you want the Ragdoll to happen, and then in the physics settings, turn Ragdoll on. With a slider, you can adjust the overall parameters of the Ragdoll, where at 100 it would be fully relaxed, and the lower the setting is, the stiffer the ragdoll will be, and the more it will try to copy the poses of your animation. I quite like this result, so I'm going to apply it, and then use ragdoll once again, but on a different interval and with different settings. Basically, I wanted to make the character a bit more limp towards the end. And again, same as with auto physics, once you apply it, you can then unbake the animation and fix the poses in the keyframes. For example, you can use auto posing if you notice some weird twists in the elbows or shoulders. Now, I'd like to conclude this video by saying that auto physics is there to help you with your animation and not to restrain your creativity. Feel free to play around with the settings, for example, you can increase the gravity and thus make your animation much snappier. And you don't always have to apply the results, you can simply use it as a reference and build your animation around it. So I guess that's it for this video. So far we've managed to retarget the animation, get the character to jump on the box, fix the feet sliding and get the weight of the weapon affect the animation used interval edit mode to fix the trajectories and ragdoll our character to oblivion. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you next time.